with the body of a model, the face of an angel and an extraordinary talent on the field, British footballer David Beckham has been dealt a winning hand. Almost as well known for his famous wife Victoria Beckham and his fashion sense, the athlete is perhaps the most globally recognized footballer of his generation. In 2008, he looked back at what had been a remarkable career, and he also looked forward to the extraordinary goal of 100 caps, marking his number of appearances for England. I think as, as, a, as a young player, you know, you, your ambition is to always play at the highest level and to play you know, for your country. And, and I, was, I was happy that day, but I also knew that I wanted to carry on playing for my country for, for as many years as possible. And it's, it's al almost coming up to 11 years now. And uh, you know, if I can get to that, to that level where I reach the 100 cap, then it would be, uh, would be incredible for me. But like I said, it's more important that I carry on playing, let alone you know, reaching the 100. You know, I, I'm, I'm passionate and I'm, I'm ready to carry on playing. So we'll just have to wait and see. Bex had wanted to be a football player for as long as he can remember. Born to David Ted Beckham, a kitchen fitter, and Sandra, a hairdresser, he began life in Leytonstone, England, in a working class family with two sisters, Joanne and Lynn. His football prowess quickly became evident, and he shone in junior teams, emulating his parents' fanatical support of soccer club Manchester United. The first club he played for as a junior was Tottenham Hotspur, after attending Hotspur's School of Excellence. Then in 1990, on his 14th birthday, he signed as a schoolboy with United, and his stellar career kicked off. 18 years later, at the British Sports Industry Awards, legendary Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson spoke fondly of the early days. I always remember that at all. Elf in face, five feet, nothing, and growing to a Fantastic footballer. You were a credit to the game, credit to Manchester United. So all I can say is for behalf of everyone at Manchester United, well done, congratulations, have a great night. However, it wasn't until the 1995-96 season that David began to play on a regular basis in the Premier League. The following season, he took on the number 10 shirt. But in May 1997, Eric Cantona, the so-called king of Old Trafford, announced his retirement, and David inherited the coveted number seven. Many fans were concerned the young midfielder would not be able to equal the achievements of former number sevens, the likes of Brian Robson, George Best and Cantona. But David continued to show complete commitment to his career, and his skills improved at lightning speed. Before long, he was called up to play for England. However, he was to find that life at the top did not come without its challenges. Years later, during the making of an Adidas advertising campaign, he remembered his ignoble sending off during England's defeat on penalties by Argentina in the 1998 World Cup. Because it was a very tough time after 98, after being sent off. Um, and I went through certain things that many people say people shouldn't have to go through uh, in life. And uh, I went through that. and. My story is that I've come out of that and you know, I'm, I'm a better person and a better footballer um, from that and stronger. England supporters are notorious for their love-hate relationship with players and many fans decided that David's red carding was solely to blame for England's early exit from the World Cup. Subject to vitriolic public abuse, including death threats, he credited his Man U manager Alex Ferguson with being one of his few ports during the storm. Just people kept on telling me to be strong, be patient, be strong, play. Sir Alex Ferguson told me to enjoy my football. Uh, he was one of the first people to phone me after, after the match uh, in 98 and he turned around to me and he said, uh, um, come back to Manchester, be here, enjoy your football, you'll be here with people that will protect you and you'll be here and you'll enjoy it. Uh, and that season we won the European Cup and we won the treble, so um, he was right. In 2001, David helped United to their third successive league title, scoring nine goals for the season. A new three-year contract signed with United in 2002 made him the highest-paid football player in the world. But behind the scenes, 
things were beginning to sour. Sir Alex and others in the club thought that David's growing celebrity status was undermining his commitment to the game. In 2003, after United lost the FA Cup final to Arsenal, there was an infamous locker room incident, during which the manager's flung boot connected with David's eyebrow, causing a cut that required stitches. That incident signalled the beginning of the end for Man U and Beckham, but he continued his national team commitments. He captained the side from 2000 to 2006 and was awarded an OBE for services to football in 2003. The following year, he brushed off questions about imminent retirement. No, I think, you know, as a, as a youngster, everyone dreams about playing for England and, and captain England. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to have done, you know, both of them. You know, I want to carry on as, as long as I can. You know, I set a... I set, uh, <coughs> I set a, a target for myself when I became an England player and when I became England captain to, to you know, get over 100 caps or to even get to 106 or 108 caps like uh, Sir, Bobby, Sir Bobby Charlton and Sir Bobby Moore. So, you know, that's, uh, that's the target I've set myself. So I want to carry on and complete that. At the 2007 Sports Industry Awards, then British Prime Minister Tony Blair spoke on behalf of a nation who continually adored the midfielder's sporting skills, while sometimes questioning his fashion choices. Of course he's been a, a huge cultural icon for our country, uh, though I was never quite sure about the sarong. Um, but most of all, he plays football, he plays it brilliantly. And when he wore the England shirt, he did it with honour and dignity and pride. And that's why we're proud of you, David, and why I'm delighted to be part of this tribute this evening. The PR savvy David acknowledged the debt he owed to his home team and its supporters. I thank the, the Manchester United players, the Manchester United fans, because without them, I wouldn't have got through 98 like I did. Um, so I have to thank them for that. I also thank the Real Madrid fans who have been incredible to me. Although David hadn't been based in England since 2003, he continued to lend his superlative skills to his national side. His legendary ability to score goals from free kicks and corners provided vital weapons to the England armory. However, lapses in form over the years have seen him drop from the side and after a long drought in 2008, he was looking forward to playing for his country again. His target of 100 caps was so close, he could almost touch it. My career's sort of been ups and downs and when I've had highs they've been extreme highs and when I've had lows they've been extreme lows so you know that's part of part of my career and part of my life but and it's part of many players lives these days but uh, you know I, I'll be very proud to hopefully reach that that hundred cap and and also get it out of the way because everybody's been talking about it for so for so long it'd be it'd be good to get it and then and then move on hopefully. Not long after, he became only the fifth Englishman to reach that goal. But David wasn't done yet. In July 2003, after months of speculation, the news came that David Beckham would be moving from Manchester to Spain. Although there had been initial reports that United were close to a deal with FC Barcelona, it was Real Madrid who emerged with a four-year deal worth £35 million to secure the services of the star midfielder. The Spanish powerhouse was hoping to cash in on Beck's incredible popularity. And in an Asian tour that same year, the fans crowded around to see the star-studded team, with the English import often the centre of attention, especially when it came to the female fans. For a country more known for table tennis than football, the locals knew that such an experienced team would provide a unique opportunity for their Chinese athletes. It's not important whether we lose or win. I think it's important that the Chinese team learns from Real Madrid and improves our football. Despite the team spirit, David's first season with Real Madrid did not go well. Although he scored five times in his first 16 matches, quickly becoming a crowd favourite, the team finished the season fourth. But it wasn't all bad news. 
the midfielder was on a weekly income of £240,000. Some football fans and commentators would find this difficult to swallow, arguing that more talented players in the team were paid a lot less. In the face of such criticism, David remained his usual courteous self. In 2005, he was in Japan for an Adidas commercial, and he showed that despite the pressure, he still loved the game. How much do you have to practice to be able to play in the way you do in the commercial? When I was uh, your size and your age, um, I loved playing football. I practiced playing football every day. Um, it was the most important thing in my life and I worked very hard. So if you work very hard, then you can reach any height and any level you, you want to. So. Um, you practice and uh, the most important thing is that you enjoy playing football and that's, that's the best thing in the world. Although he was working with a talented and experienced team on and off the field, David's new club failed to perform as well as they and their fans would have liked. In 2007, he was asked why great wins failed to materialise. Um, it is a surprise because obviously you play in a team like Real Madrid with some of the best players in the world and uh, especially in the first year because we, we had the likes of Zidane, Figo, Roberto Carlos, Raul um, and so many more so it is hard to take but at the end of the day I, I don't re regret my decision of going to Spain and going to Real Madrid you know it's... Why the lack one of success? Sometimes you just can't explain things in football um, and it's just one of those situations so um, but I've enjoyed my time there I'm very grateful to the fans and to the club for giving me the experiences that they've given me so um, and I move on. After only 113 games for the Spanish club David packed up his family again this time in an unexpected move to a country that scarcely rates football on its list of national sports. David signed with LA Galaxy to start in mid-2007. Although his time in Spain had not provided him with many career highlights, it had certainly done wonders for the coffers at Real Madrid, with estimates that merchandise figures had gone through the roof, topping £40 million. The subsequent move to LA would mean a sizeable pay cut, but at least David and his family could be assured of a little more privacy in the US. There's a less obsession with celebrity in America. There is an obsession, but it's not as intense as it is in Europe and particularly the UK. The media isn't so thick on the ground. There's a lot of it, but by, by English standards, it's not as much, believe it or not. So on many levels, there's a great canvas. He'll obviously go for the fashionable, the, 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 the glamorous media uh, and from there being at parties and establishing his name and actually creating events out of this sort of sporting spectacle would actually have s uh, sponsors salivating to get him involved turning up, turning up at every sort of first night. You can see that he can maintain a certain amount of privacy and drive the brand and still have change to spare. A number of rumours began to circulate about the move. Some suggested that he was just not up to playing at top level anymore, but David refused to be brought down by the armchair critics. Some people were saying that it's the right time for me to go because my legs have gone. So um, there's difference of opinions and everyone's got their opinions, but for me it's the right time to go because I didn't want to go over to the States and into another challenge um, at the end of my career. I wanted to go where I still felt like I could perform at a high level and, and make a difference. And that's that's going to be my, my position out there, you know, it's not just going to be the playing side, it's going to be the ambassador role for football, not just in the MLS, but around the world, so it's, it's an exciting project for me. Early in his career with a new club, the star footballer was plagued with injury, and the first season was frustrating, with a loss at the playoff. At the same time, David continued to play with other teams, training with Arsenal in early 2008, and finally being recalled to the English team in March. Playing in Europe helped keep his skills sharp and Galaxy began to move up the ranks. In 2009, Bex was loaned to AC Milan and his impressive debut proved that nearing his mid-30s hadn't slowed him down. Milan wanted to keep him, but their offer fell short, so they entered into a unique time-sharing deal with Galaxy. In the 2010 World Cup qualifier, 
David was back on the field with England, earning his 107th cap to become the third highest capped player in the English game. Almost as well known as David Beckham is his wife Victoria, also known as Posh Spice, thanks to her tenure in the girl band The Spice Girls. Posh met the Dashing Becks in 1997 when she attended a Manchester United game and the couple married in 1999. Known for her love of high fashion, Victoria has remained loyal to her husband in the face of racy rumours of multiple affairs. The couple have three sons, Brooklyn Joseph born in 1999, Romeo James in 2002 and Cruz David in 2005 who was born in Spain. The super couple have been very savvy in transferring their brand power to a number of lucrative ventures. In 2008, David joined a list of famous sports people who have headlined a Sharpie pen advertisement. Sharpie marketers claim their pens are preferred by autograph hunters around the world. The same year, it was Victoria who launched their new his and hers fragrance, Beckham Signature, in Macy's in New York. We just want to say thank you so much. The turnout has been absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much for queuing up for so long in the rain. Um, it's great for us to be here. We're very, very excited. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you all. So thank you. Victoria has influenced her husband in many of his fashion choices, making him one of the best dressed sportsmen in the world. And there's no doubt the fashion industry has fallen in love with a superstar couple. In 2008, David stripped down for Armani, and the result was certainly eye-catching. I've done quite a few photo shoots before, but I've never done any in, in my underwear. Um, so I was slightly, you know, I wasn't sure about the whole thing, but, you know, with working with Meta Marcus, they made me feel really at ease, and uh, it went pretty well. A year later, Victoria undressed for Armani as well. David's work keeps him fit, but his wife was much less confident about showing her body. I was so excited about doing this, and I worked out really hard. You know, I've been doing a lot of running, because um, obviously, you know, you think, you know, I look okay, but if I'm going to be taking my clothes off, I kind of, you know, I wanted to tone up a little bit. So I've worked hard to have the confidence to do it. The footballer's hairstyles and tattoos have also been highly influential with hairdressers and tattoo artists the world over receiving requests for the latest Beckham style. However, the midfielder has always hoped that his influence can extend wider than just fashion. In 2005, he opened the David Beckham Academy Football School in London and LA. His time as a boy at the Bobby Charlton Football School had remained a precious childhood memory and he wanted to give back to a new generation of young players. I've grown up with football, I've grown up in soccer schools, and for me, working with, ki with, with kids and children is one of the most, one of the most um, exciting experiences you could have as a footballer. You know, to see the happiness that soccer schools bring to kids, um, you know, for me, that's the most important thing in life. In 2008, he flew to Brazil, to announce plans to open a large sporting complex, the David Beckham World of Sport. The complex was due to include eight soccer fields and a 10,000 capacity soccer stadium. You know, I'm very proud of the ones that I've got in London and also in LA, but um, I've always also said that I want to take it to other places around the world and uh, we're better than here. You know, it's an amazing place. Um, very passionate about the game, very passionate about football, um, and I'm very proud to, to obviously be part of this because it's been, it's been, it's going to take a while, but I think that it's going to be one of the best facilities in the world. We're going to be able to obviously have children come down to the academy and enjoy themselves and play in a safe place, um, and also we're going to be able to have the facilities to have, you know, top top football teams from all around the world to be able to come down here and spend their pre-seasons or you know um, just have a break so it's gonna it's gonna be something special the same year British Prime Minister Gordon Brown visited David's soccer Academy in London he had heard great things about it 
and was looking for a model which could be applied across the broader school system. David was delighted, if a little surprised, to have his opinion sought out by the head of state. I think he's very positive in everything that, he's, uh, that he wants to achieve. I think that you know he welcomed me into, into number 10 and uh, made me feel, like I said, very welcome and spoke about different things that he wants to achieve and different things that he wants to achieve, not just obviously with the country, but with, with myself and with the academy. Um, and that's special because you know, I've worked hard to obviously to get the academy to, to be successful um, and, like I said, to, to be invi invited to, to number 10 and also to, to have the Prime Minister come down to the academy. Um, I'm very proud of that. David was also instrumental in the English bid for the Olympics and a large part of his enthusiasm was centred on the involvement of children. London was successful in its bid to hold the 2012 Games and at the Chinese Olympics, he noted that there had already been a shift in attitude back home. You know, I really noticed it being in London last week, you know, seeing the hype and seeing everything that, that, that kids wanted to be involved in. You know, you see kids out running on the streets and, you know, doing different things and cycling out there, you know, so it's, it, it just gets that excitement from children and from you know, from so many different people in the world. And I think that's what's great about the Olympics. It has that excitement that can change people's lives. Later in the year, he was in New York to share the stage with another sporting hero who's recognized the world over. At a gala banquet, David presented Brazilian footballing great Pele with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Proceeds from the evening were to go to Harlem to build a soccer field and David had spent some time in the notoriously rough neighbourhood. The, the kids' faces changed when, when they run onto the field and when they got a soccer ball. So, you know, to have that, to have that um, you know, passion that they, that they showed just within, you know, uh, two hours of being down there, you know, it does change people's lives. He teamed up with another sports legend to promote yet another good cause. He and tennis star Andy Murray launched the anti-malaria campaign Malaria No More UK. The pair tried to match skills at Wembley Stadium, first by kicking a soccer ball over a 68-metre mosquito net and then switching to tennis rackets. Malaria obviously is, is one of the biggest diseases that, that causes so many deaths around the world and especially in Africa. When I first heard the statistics with, with malaria and with children uh, under the age of five, it automatically makes you think of your own children. Since then, David has continued to balance his superstar football career with charity work, family life and his fashion interests. In 2009, in honour of his 10th wedding anniversary, he added to his growing gallery of tattoos, with a ring of roses on his left arm. From the boy from Leighton Stone, there could be no more fitting tribute. With the body of a model, the face of an angel and an extraordinary talent on the field, British footballer David Beckham has been dealt a winning hand. Almost as well known for his famous wife Victoria Beckham and his fashion sense, the athlete is perhaps the most globally recognised footballer of his generation. In 2008, he looked back at what had been a remarkable career and he also looked forward to the extraordinary goal of one whole support of soccer club Manchester United. The first club he played for as a junior was Tottenham Hotspur, 
after attending Hotspur's School of Excellence. Then in 1990, on his 14th birthday, he signed as a schoolboy with United and his stellar career kicked off. 18 years later, at the British Sports Industry Awards, legendary Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson spoke fondly of the early days. I always remember that at all. Playing, let alone you know reaching the hundred. You know I'm I'm passionate and I'm I'm ready to carry on playing. So we'll just have to wait and see. Bex had wanted to be a football player for as long as he can remember. Born to David Ted Beckham, a kitchen fitter, and Sandra, a hairdresser. He began life in Leytonstone, England, in a working-class family with two sisters, Joanne and Lynn. His football prowess quickly became evident, and he shone in junior teams, emulating his parents' fanatic hundred caps, marking his number of appearances for England. I think as, as, a, as a young player, you know, you, your ambition is to always play at the highest level and to play you know, for your country. And, and I, was, I was happy that day, but I also knew that I wanted to carry on playing for my country for, for as many years as possible and it's, it's al almost coming up to 11 years now and uh, you know if I can get to that, to that level where I reach the 100 cap then it would be, uh, would be incredible for me but like I said it's more important that I carry on 